first one we found was the was the male leopard up right in the top of an ebony tree. He was very relaxed and sort of lazily hanging around the branch. The female was a little bit different. She was a little unsettled and moving around the base of the tree, um, sort of marking and scratching the ground. She clearly wasn't altogether comfortable with his with him being there. She was quite unsettled about something and uh, maybe it's the, the presence of her two new cubs fairly close by. There's a chance that if he found them he'd probably kill them. She disappeared for five or six minutes and then the male decided to change his position. It'd be nice to keep an eye on these two. I hope to see them in the next couple of days. And the male would be quite easy to distinguish because he's got a really big gash on the back of his, on his back leg. This is the seal colony at Cape Cross in Namibia and these are the Cape fur seals. There are apparently 24 seal colonies along the Namibian South African coast. When we arrived here, um, we heard and we smelt them before we even got to see them. They, they are an impressive smell and sight. A lot of the rocks on which these seals were laying were very smooth. I can't even begin to imagine over what period of time, how many, 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 many years it must have taken to wear these rocks down the way that they have. And obviously these seals have been coming here for ages. Looking for parents, of course, is, it takes a, a, quite a bit of energy and bleating, walking, <laughs> bleating, <laughs> looking. Um, sometimes a little bit of rejection from someone who's not mum. Uh, apparently they do find themselves by using recognition of the, the calls between the mother and the, and the pup, also by smell. Black rhinoceros, hook-lipped, bedjian in Zulu, one of Africa's big animals. Strange and primitive creature, this, of uncertain temper, fight or flight is all it knows. Two modes of interaction with humans, it either runs at you or it runs away, nothing in between. Cape Weaver, a little observer, watching how the situation unfolds.
only the adult males spray their urine in this way to mark their exclusivity of the territory. Red heart to be a passing keeps going. Slowly, almost surreptitiously, he browses his way closer and closer. Good looking animal. See his flanks covered with ticks. Unlike the lowland rhinos in KwaZulu Natal, where the flanks are so ravaged by parasitic worms that they have these permanent open bloody patches, too dry in this environment for these parasitic infestations. A good place for black rhino. He definitely senses that there is something out here, but is not sure what. His eyesight is not particularly good, but his sense of smell and hearing is acute. The horn is stupidly prized by the Chinese and other Eastern races for its medico-magical properties and especially for its supposed value as an aphrodisiac. True or false, the rhino deserves to live. And so, they are constantly vulnerable to poachers, their status extremely insecure. They are endangered. been zigzagging, going first one way and then the other, testing the air, trying to pinpoint whether there is or isn't someone out here. Something remarkable in this situation that one feels completely safe until that moment when it turns and you know that you on the edge of being in real trouble being all right. He decides to turn and to run. And then the landscape stands empty once again. And I am left with a feeling of awe for the life in this world.